Right. I'm going to ask you something just the once, and I want you to be truthful, OK? That dream you had last night was about me or Tom Holland? What? You were up all night tossing and turning, and at one point you even started talking. What did I say? Put me down, Spider-Man. I don't know, I couldn't hear. Definitely you. That is the right answer. It's probably down to being locked up in that place. It takes some adjusting to being home. Yeah. But look, you are here now, so you don't need to think about that place anymore, OK? Perhaps it's worth remembering that Sam is just a child, and so... Uh, uh, are you suggesting that I allow him to win? Well, not exactly. I, I just think it's important that he doesn't get demoralised. Chess is a complex game. Which has the power to shape a child's mind and prepare them for the, for the many challenges that life will present. Indeed. But I, I rather fear that the poor boy has faced more challenges than are reasonable for one so young. In fact, you know, I think it's best if I should go first. Ease him in gently. As you wish. I expect you will enjoy the victory after so long. If you excuse me, I must be heading back to work. Mm. Till later, then. Come on, just a quick one. Coffee. <laughs> Look, trust me, there's nothing I need more than to see you and have another coffee with you, but I really need to head to court. Ah, oh, boundary dispute? Once it's over, things will calm down. I know. And to be fair, I need to head into the factory anyway. Oh, by the way, um, I've got a meeting with Lydia later. Oh, yeah? OK. Wish me luck. Good luck. And you've had a word with his teachers? Uh, yeah, yeah. They know all about Natasha. And, you know, I told them that Sam was struggling. What could, wouldn't, you know, losing a parent at such a young age? But being back in a familiar environment with kids his own age to play with, it's the best thing for him, Nick. I mean, kids are incredibly resilient, you know. Would you like me to pick him up? Uh, take him to the library or something? No, no, it's fine. Uh, Roy and Mary are going to play chess with him after school, so I might go there. I think that's a good idea. Oh, come on, Mum. On the list of danger sports, I think chess is right down the list. No, no, I, I mean fraternising with Roy and Mary. <laughs> you make it sound like they're going to go behind the bike sheds and smoke fags. You know, he's interested in chess. And right now, him being interested in anything is a minor miracle. Yeah, but he's already spending a lot of time with George. Yeah, and his classmates and Hope and I don't care who he's with as long as they draw him out of himself and get him talking, OK? Hey, I'm just wondering if you've heard anything. Don't you think I'd have said if I had? Oh, yeah, sorry. No, I'm sorry. Look, Ted's grandson's probably found him by now. Do you reckon? I mean, yeah, of course, you're right. But what if he hasn't? What do you want me to say? There's no reason for anyone to be suspicious of us. Let's just forget about it, agreed? I don't think I slept at all last night. Me neither. Craig said I was tossing and turning. Look, I better get back to the factory or else Beth will be moaning that her cream horn's curdled. Em? Everything OK? Yeah, I'm fine. Really? Good. That's good. You haven't heard from Curtis, have you? What? No, I told you, I'm fine. Fine, I know, yeah. But judging by your face, you're obviously not. Which is totally fine. Obviously, it's fine in front of your old dad. Listen, any time you want to talk. Look, I really will be okay. I know. Listen, at least let me cheer you up, take you to Roy's. I could be, uh, be here. It's a French waiter. It's a bit of a in the news. <laughs> could have a crepe or something. Who are you going to get changed, love? Is the reason that you don't want to go running with me because you think I look daft? No. Mutton dressed as lamb? No. Because I grant you, matching outfits, that might be a step too far, but you could just wear your real comfy ones. I told you, love, I just don't feel up for it, that's all. Me hand. What? It's me hand, it's still throbbing, that's the reason why I can't go running. Well, 
Listen, why don't we go for lunch somewhere instead? And before you say anything, I'm not talking the cafe. I'm sorry, love, I can't. Why not? Because I've got to go into work because one of the drivers is running sick. Well, can't you swap with Steve or somebody? You're the boss. No. Well, I didn't spend a small fortune on Lycra just to sit in front of the telly on my own doing car pumps. These leggings cost me £30. I don't spend that on going out trousers. Well, I'll give you the flaming money. That is not the point, Tim. I took the day off so we could do something together. Do you know what? Just forget it. Sally, I'm sorry. Well, you will be, because when I've got changed, I'm going into town with your flexible friend. Honestly, Tim, you can be such a drama queen sometimes. Ah, thank you. See, I think you're missing a trick here. Uh, how so? Well, you know, you've got your breakfast, dinner, tea, staples, you know, your bread and butter. You mean um, breakfast, lunch, dinner? Well, well, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Anyway, the point is, is that if you do a brunch, like, in between, then you've immediately increased your business by 25%. Brunch is the meal between breakfast and lunch, not breakfast and dinner. Yeah, because that'd be Bryn Brinner. Mm. Thank you for these. <clears throat> um, there was no chipolatas. <laughs> Listen, you know, I always had your best interest at heart with... You're allowed to say his name. Well, the point is, is that you saw Curtis for what he truly was. And he made the right decision. And I know that that is... You know, it's not always easy to do. Well, if I couldn't trust him, what was the point? Exactly. Listen, sweetheart, I am no saint. I have told my fair share of porkies over the years, mainly to Tracy, and for good reason. But, you know, it eats away at you. The guilt. Well, at least it should do if you're a half-decent human being. And the fact that Curtis can live with that every day just proves that you are far too good for him. Doesn't it? Now, good man. Hit that. Looks like somebody had a good result. You, my friend, are correct. Not only did we win, but we were awarded all costs. Amazing. Congratulations. I reckon it's calls for a celebratory lunch. Oh, I don't know. Oh, come on. You can't deny me this opportunity to mark my victory. Nelson got his column. Lincoln got his memorial. All right, all right. Back at Bistro. Oh, you're not exactly gifted in the imagination department, are you? Well, it so happens that I've just been in touch with an ex-client of mine who has just opened a very exclusive members-only club in town. Give him a call if you like. Now we're talking. Let's get a cab, yeah? I think we should. Good news, though, right? I'm basking in your reflected glory. Yeah, as always. Good to see you looking a bit brighter. Right, I'll stick this in the car and we'll... Eesh. Who did you annoy? Nobody. Her? Why? She's trying to cause trouble between me and Sarah. And I called her out on it. I told Daniel to be careful. Ah. Well, just, just take a minute. OK? For starters, they don't even have any proof. Listen, I really wish I could end that and out, but I've got to get on to the next job. I will manage. And even I can't mess up a bit of painting. Oh, yeah. Do you know, this job can be so easy, I sometimes wonder why I did an apprenticeship. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. You're all right, don't worry. <laughs> Thanks again, yeah? Yeah, you are welcome. Um, as for that painting of those tables, do remember, brush strokes up and down, not side to side. Good man, good luck. Cheers. It's your responsibility, you know. I've got to do what I can. Well, then, let me help. You? Seriously? I should be offended, but actually, my dad and I... Sorry. Well, whatever he did to us, he was still your blood. 
Tom. You and your dad. When I was about 14, we painted my bedroom together. He bought this sugary pink paint. For his little princess. I made him change it for purple with a black ceiling. Oh, classy. <laughs> I was so bored. But he said I needed to know how to do stuff for myself. He loved you, yeah? And it's OK to miss him. Don't you have to get back to London? Back to work? I'm having to use up my leave. And if I'm honest, the thought of sitting in my flat working my way through more box sets. Let's just say painting a bunch of old tables suddenly seems really exciting. <laughs> Dad got me an Eccles cake for later. I swear he thinks an Eccles cake's the answer to every problem. He got me one once for my birthday. He tried to make it out, it's because it was our thing. I totally knew he'd just forgotten to get me a proper present. Like him, that's stupid. So what did you do? Made him feel guilty, obviously. Went in the bank. Sneaky. Watch and learn. <laughs> Emma, was this in the car when he took it out on New Year's Eve? Left it. It was part of my fancy dress. Oh, you didn't say it was a fancy dress thing. Yeah. Who'd you go as? Does it matter? Are you rattled your cage? I'm just interested, that's all. I love fancy dress. A book. You had to go as a book. Character. Oh, the suspense is killing me. <sighs> the little boy from a Christmas carol with the crutch. Tiny Tim. Bob Cratchit's kid. Yeah, yeah do you want me to what? Yeah, thanks. We'll see you later. Yeah. Yeah, listen, I'm sorry I'm up to me eyes in it. If you could just... Oh, all right, understood. OK. Yeah, good luck. Bye. Hey, Ed. You see a woman coming here a few minutes ago? Dark hair, camel coat. No, mate, I'm on a working lunch, so I wouldn't have seen anyone. Ah, there you are. Guess what? Somebody just keyed my car. And you think I'd be interested? Why? <laughs> oh, come on. Don't play the innocent. It doesn't suit you. Oh, what, you think I did it? <laughs> oh, my days. I knew you had a giant ego, but... Oh, you're pathetic. No, I'll tell you what's pathetic. Convince yourself that some fling we had years ago was actually a serious relationship. They're trying to convince my wife of it. Sarah doesn't need me to tell her what you like. You know, I see women like you all the time with work. You're a bit lonely, a bit miserable. You can't stand seeing other people happy in their relationships. I'm telling you, if you're trying to destroy my marriage, your marriage is marginally less interesting to me than you are. <laughs> and as for key in your car like some love-struck saddo, seriously. All right, maybe it's what I said to Daniel about you yesterday. Not everything revolves around you. Everything all right? Look, do us all a favour, yeah? Grow up and move on. I think about joining a game show. Faye said I might try and get in a game show. Sorry, what for? What for? For money. It's, it's not cheap raising a kid, you know. I suppose. You haven't even got to the most expensive part yet. <sighs> yeah, I know, but my mum said it's more important to raise them with good values. Honesty, integrity, responsibility. Which is obvious. <sighs> is it a matter of fall or something? What? You okay? Um, yeah, she's fine. I'll be back in a minute. Underwell, Michael Bailey speaking. What are you doing? Why have you got that? It's Ted's. Your dad just found it in the boot of the car. Oh, he didn't say it was yours, did you? I panicked. I said it was Tiny Tim. Who? What? A fancy dress party on New Year's Eve. Look, I'm sorry, I didn't know what to do. But I think he's got Ted's initials on it. Yeah, no, I'll just check the order number for you now. Um, cover for me, will you, please? <laughs> <laughs> I did not change my mind about the colour. Hey, three times we took them curtains back. They were always the same colour, just the wrong shade. Yeah, of white. The wrong shade of white. <laughs> What's your point, Z? <laughs> what? Nothing. Zidane! <laughs> you are so annoying!
annoying. Stop laughing. Okay, okay. You got paint on your face. Oh, what? Where? On your. Come here. They look pretty into one another. Just what we need. Yeah. I can't lie. I just can't. My face goes all stupid. Oh, you have got to calm down. I've been checking the news every two minutes to see if I found him. I know, me too. Well, maybe Craig could find out. If Ted's grandson has found him, then he'd have to report him to someone, wouldn't he? I can't. Oh, please, Faye. Look, this isn't easy for me either. You're not the only one who finds it hard to lie. Sorry. Every time I think of him on his own, I just feel sick. Maybe I could go back to the flat. What? You can't. Yeah, but at least then we'd know. What are you not getting? We ran over an old man and didn't report it. He's died and we didn't report it. But we didn't do anything wrong, not on purpose, but we did everything wrong. You can't go anywhere near that place. Neither of us can, ever. Yeah, but Emma, please, we have to stick with our decision. You can't go back there, OK? <sighs> Actually, I've got another appointment in a bit. Do you think there's a chance we can start without her? Listen, I'm sorry about this. Lydia's usually extremely punctual. Oh, don't worry. I'm sure there's uh, a good reason. She's late. It's just, um... Let me try her again. Oh. Oh. Ah, there you are. Sorry. Oh, sorry, I didn't realise. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mrs Barlow has another meeting to go to. So let's dive straight in and take a look at the figures, shall we? Figures. What? Do you know, it's fine. Um, I don't need oh. them now anyway. I mean, you can just email them over to me. Wait for me outside. Coffee! To me, what? Why don't we all have a nice coffee? Oh, thanks, but no thanks. Oh, nice shoes. You always look so... nice. Leave now. <laughs> OK. Sorry. <laughs> what can I say? I'll call you and make another appointment if that's okay. No, don't worry. Honestly, it's um, she's she must just be a little bit um, unwell. Oh, I'm gasping. Where's Tim? You traded him in for a little black dress, have you? What? Whenever me and Carly used to go shopping, it would always end up me sitting outside the changing rooms with a load of other bored-looking blokes like that. Well, Timothy actually enjoys coming shopping with me. Oh, Timothy does, does Timothy he? Timothy does. Although Steve, in his wisdom, forced him to blow me off, said he was needed in the camp. Oh. Oh, okay. So he was off. Uh, off? Yeah, which driver? Cos if it was that young lad again, I reckon they should just uh, get no, him. No, no, it was uh, uh, Barry. He's got a bad ear. It's ringing and stuff. Said it's like having a bevy of campanologists in his lug hole. Barry? Mm. Barry the one that I've just seen picking somebody up outside the tram station? Sorry, Sal. No, not, not Barry. You know, um, one more light from you and we're gonna fall out. Timothy hasn't been working at all, has he? Mr Metcalf. Sorry to have kept you waiting. Please take a seat. I'm Dr. Handley, one of the uh, cardiac consultants. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, as you know, you've been referred to us by your uh, GP, who's a little concerned about your heart. Well, couldn't she find it? My dear, it's not the first time I've been called heartless. I'm fine, doctor, really. Good. Uh, but better to err on the side of caution, the way. So, it says here. You've been experiencing shortness of breath when exercising or exerting yourself. Yeah, my knees creak when it rains. I'm 50 next birthday. It's no fun getting old, I tell you. I understand. Uh, but given your history of heart problems, I think it was totally appropriate for Dr Gaddis to refer you to us anyway. OK. Rugby? Football. He's a Worthy County fan. Oh, with a lifetime of heartache ahead of him, as Steve would say. You know, I confess, 
I showed little prowess for sport at school, although it was a hefty whack with a hockey stick from Paulette Hardacre and three broken metatarsals that led to the beginning of my love affair for chess, so... <laughs> there we are. Hey, hey look, uh, thanks for doing this, both of you. He's really excited. Then I shall set up the board and... Oh! Excellent. All right, young man. So it's your turn to choose. White or black? Aha! Uh, <clears throat> there is a general consensus that the player who has the first move has a slight advantage, so if I might suggest... Ah. Indeed. Yes, a, a, a particularly strong opening move, which both strives to uh, control the center of the board whilst releasing queen and a bishop. Yes, thank you, Roy. I see I have a worthy opponent. But please remember, every decision that you make must follow careful consideration of the choices you have before you. Or the consequences could be disastrous. someone about my neighbour. I haven't seen him for a few days. Oh, is my putting so annoying? You're looking for another job? What? No. Um... I'm flat hunting. Me and Craig moving in together. Oh. This is the part where you say congrats. Uh, living with other people. Oh no. I mean, Grace, right? She used to just to clean around the toaster, but never under it. I'm like, how hard is it to just under the toaster? Do you know what I mean? <sighs> well, I'm pretty chilled. I have to be a live with Sally. Oh, Lady Metcalf. No wonder you're packing up. Yeah. <laughs> Is that why I'm just being a bit... A bit what? Well, you know, bobbing in for nothing, dragging you away from your desk, a bit needy. You've noticed? Yeah. Well, it must be hard for her when her all her friends moving on. She probably feels a bit left behind. Yeah, that's it. She's still caught up about Curtis, you know, when someone's lied and lied like that. <sighs> yeah. Is that her? Um, no, it's Craig. We was meant to go out for tea, but he's got a new job coming. Ah, uh, yeah, my mum's had a few nights wrecked like that. I, mean, I get the appeal of being a nurse and being in the police, but, you know what I mean, every day is different, but at the end of the shift, you never know what's going to jump up and bite you in the bum. I guess the weirdest things just happened. Adam just won a case. Mm. Well, you wouldn't think it to look at him. Well, he turned on a victory lunch earlier. I think Lydia's just been sacked. She's just turned up late for a meeting, three sheets to the wind. She what? Oh, hammered. She didn't know any of the figures that Gavin was asking for. That's like her boss, and he is Marty at the best of times. Well, he just sacked her on the spot? Well, well, he's tried to be discreet about it, but it was obvious he was absolutely fuming. He sent her out, he's cancelled the meeting. I, I've just had to stand there and like, act out, oh, you know, maybe she's just a bit under the weather. <laughs> I've heard it called many things in my life. Adam, it's not funny. She's a single mum and she needs a job. She probably should have thought of that. Oh, Finn, I was thinking maybe we should go round. Don't. Well, I've tried to ring her and she's not picking up. She'll be too ashamed. Leave it. What on earth, Possessor? Yeah, I get that you guys got to dot the I's and cross the T's. The angiogram will give us a better picture. Uh, make sure we bring all the medication you're on and uh, read the leaf back. Still get people rocking up straight after a full English breakfast. All right, noted. Oh, and avoid any uh, stress or uh, exertion. I'd love to, but I'm a county fan. No, I'm, I'm serious. Uh, lay off the exercise until we know what's what. Are you opting for sedation? You'll need someone with you to take you home. Nah, I'd be fine on my own. I can't afford to be knocked out for hours and then. I've got work to do. Will I get the results on the same day? Hopefully. Uh, it just depends on what we find. 
Well, it won't be two eggs and a load of fried bread, that's for sure. <laughs> Thanks, Doctor. Yeah, rest up. You hear me? Yeah. I give up. Three out of three. My goodness, I've been well and truly trounced. <laughs> Sam, uh, don't forget. Oh, no, thank you. Etiquette is an important part of the game. He's got excellent manners. Got that from his mum. As the reigning champ, you get to choose. to play. The shortest checkmate in chess. Known as fool's mate. Best of three. Sam? <laughs> Son? Surely you, you want me to show you the moves? Why? You didn't have to give him such a thrashing now, look. What? Wait, he's ten, he's a beginner, and he's just lost his mother. For which I am deeply sorry. Plus, he is still barely talking after all the trauma. Lying is never the solution, I should know. How will the boy ever improve his match play if he never experiences defeat? Hi, Tim. It's, uh, it's Aggie Bailey here. You dropped your wallet when you were in the hospital just now. And I tried to look for your mobile number in it. I I've just got your landline on my phone. Anyway, don't worry. It's in safe hands. I'll, uh, look, I'll drop it round when I come off shift. All right, love. I'll see you later. Bye. Remember when we used to play like that? Hey, back in the day. Oh, my arms will be killing me in the morning. <laughs> this was your bright idea. Flat pack shelves, easy. Painting tables, anyone can do that. Uh, anyone who's builder's done a bunk. <laughs> Imagine someone saying that to you. Chucking spices in a pan, mate. Anyone can do that. <laughs> Even a muppet like Ryan can screw in a chair leg. <laughs> I need a skilled eye for measuring, a good nose for sussing something's cooked, plus my sophisticated palate. You forgot the bat ears for when the smoke alarm goes off. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as the woman who burns water. <laughs> How much longer is she sticking around? Rude. Every time I look at her, I see Hashim lying there. Well, how do you think I feel? I'm walking on eggshells every second's a lie. You're not planning a romantic reunion? What, do I look mad? She'll be going back to London soon. A few more days and she'll be on her way. Right. Panic over. I came straight from work. Well, I didn't want you cancelling everything. Well, that's why I left you the message. On your answer phone machine. Well, I didn't have your mobile number, sorry. You, you've lost me, love. Your wallet. You dropped it at the hospital. Ah. Well, didn't you realise it was missing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did shout you, but you had sparks flying off your heels. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not right keen on a hospital. Sorry, love. No offence. <laughs> None taken. Oh, sorry, I'm forgetting myself here, aren't I? Sorry. Look, I don't want a reward. I'm just glad you got it back. All right, well, uh, do me a favour. If you see Sally, don't tell her, will you? She doesn't know that I'm going for these tests. It's just routine gubbins. I don't want to worry her. None of my business. So you didn't actually speak to her, then? No. No, like I said, I just left a message. Good. Well, if you see her, you've not seen me, right? And you never found my wallet. What wallet? 
Yeah, well, good luck with your test results. Yeah, it's somehow nothing, nothing to worry about. Yeah, well, you're in good hands. Graham Handley's the best in the business. Yeah. Right, I'm off. I'll see you later, love. Too early for shots. Steady on. There's a border dispute on the McLeibel case. Hey, a protracted and bitter dispute requiring expert handling. I'm quoting the judge there. Right, toast. Jeremy Bremner. You are obnoxious and obsessive. Spending the cost that you're ordered to pay will be a pleasure and a privilege. Cheers. Mm. Well, that cost was well timed, though. That race break's not going to be cheap. Did Kev give you an estimate yet? He banged your car again. It's just a scrape. Right, what's your poison? Tequila, Sambuca? Oh, do you remember those shots we had that Gexy made us at Booze Bar? It was like grenadine, avocado, and then in squirt cream with little sprinkles. They were like perfect little trifles. Yeah, what's that I'd find you here? Hey, Craig, can we attempt you to a shot? Oh, no, it's our phase waiting. I'm just checking. Did um, PC Benson ring you? They found out he keeps your car. It turns out a witness reported the whole thing, he even clocked the perch reg number. When Benno pulled him, the guy didn't even deny it. The guy? Yeah, I mean, beat him in court, apparently. Jeremy Bremner, the boundary bully. You've got some groveling to do, though. Um, Lydia Chambers wasn't happy about getting the blame. You accused Lydia of keying your car? She's a bunny boiler. No, she's not. When did this happen? I reported her. Straight after she denied it. Sorry, I thought you knew. No wonder she needed a stiff drink. Stiff? You said she got hammered. Your words. Would a normal, balanced person do that? You wouldn't do that. No, but... Right, you don't know what else is going on in her life. I mean, that accusation could have been the final straw. Adam, she's lost a job and you don't even seem bothered. I didn't put the bottle in her hand. Oh, right, you, listen, you need to sort this. You need to go and apologise to her and you need to get her a job back before Gavin recruits someone else. <sighs> Mackenzie! Dad! What, you can jump over a mini? You want to get away from that window? You're as bad as sell with your curtain twitching. I'm not curtain twitching. All this mooning around waiting for Craig to walk down the road. You should be playing the long game. Well, we were meant to be going out, but he says he's working late. How late's late? Well, you want to watch it. He'll get used to all this red carpet treatment, your face lighting up when he walks through the door. <laughs> what, like yours was when Sally comes in? Where is she, anyway? Oh, she got face on, hasn't she, because I didn't go running with you. I thought you wanted to get fit. I am fit. I'm wiring me. <laughs> Dr Gregory House! Yes! Um, you know that party you went to? You didn't say it was fancy dress. Who did you go? Scrooge? Emma said that she found a crutch and went as Tiny Tim. <laughs> Scrooge. Didn't think of that. Good one. Listen, we wanted to tell you together, but me and Craig are looking for a flat. Oh, well, that's a bit soon, isn't it? Is there something else we should know? No, I'm not pregnant. Oh. And we've known each other for years. Why wait? We're dead excited. Well, if you're happy, I'm happy. He's a lucky man. Hi. Hi. Sorry. Yeah, I'm just saying what a lucky man you were getting to move in with this little belter. I told him. I couldn't wait. Sorry, but I've been snowed under. Busy case, were it? Don't tell me you can't talk about it. We can still go out. Can you bother? Because I am shattered. Well, I made a list of flats that we can view. Uh, five mile radius. You might have got my blessing to move in together, but not too far away, OK? It's A, Catherine of Arrogant. Mm. I could have strangled Roy. He opened up his fool's mate. I just wanted to turn around and say, you're the fool, because now we're back at square one. No pun intended. It was dead keen. You know, I haven't seen him this motivated since. You know, it's his first day back at school in ages, and I'm just worried he's becoming more and more of an outsider. Word of advice from the mother of a troubled son. <laughs> it wasn't that bad, was it? <laughs> Not you, David. The power lies with the one who cares the least. Back off, Nick. 
You care far too much about everything right now. Um, do you think it's a good idea if we want to talk flat stuff? Craig, Faye, what are you having on me? Bottle of lager then, please. You do? Yeah, I'll, I'll grab them. Had you had a mare every day? Oh. Right, so I was just clocking off and this call comes through. Old man found dead in his flat. Well, don't tell me he laid there for months and neighbours didn't have a clue. No, no, you know, good guy, popular man, good family. Oh, still, it's still sad when someone dies alone. Mm, this is the thing. We're not sure he was alone. See, he had a bruising down one side of his body. Treating his death as suspicious. Yeah, well, old folk are always having falls. You know, Rita once nearly missed Christmas. She was flat out, couldn't move, and no one had a clue. He, he could have tripped over the cat. There was no cat. Just an anonymous tip off. What? Uh, someone called saying she was worried he hadn't been seen, but they wouldn't leave a name. What who does that? Someone who's dodgy or stupid or both. Emma, are you okay? Yeah, sorry, I'm just finding this a bit triggering. You know, he could have been someone's dad and he's making me think of my dad's. I'm sorry? No, oh, even though I was with mine till the end, it's just... I'm sorry, I just need a breath. Emma. <sighs> just keep an eye out for when Jenny... Me and my big mouth. Michael, you wait. I'll go. No. You've had a hard day. Drink that, you've earned it. I know how Emma's mind works. It keeps the brushes moist overnight. Then you only have to clean them once when the job's finished. My dad taught me. I never had him down as a DIYer. He wasn't always rich. When we were little, he had to turn his own to all kinds. So is he. What do you care? He's the reason we're doing all this. I know I'm in the way. You could have turned your back on me like most of my family. And when my dad was giving handouts to every cousin from Leeds to Lahore, they couldn't get enough of us. Now it's marry him who? How could you be so stupid? I couldn't bear it. Poor Ted all cold and alone. People spout that well-loved in the community stuff, but what if no one had come? What if he'd have been lying there for days? There'd have been less evidence. Now it's all fresh and new and ready to be investigated. You're cold. I'm scared. Big difference. Look, I didn't know they would see it as suspicious. I could have told you if you would have come to me first like we agreed, but you knew that I'd stop you. You know the trace calls? Yeah, but I jumped a bus to Oak Hill. Like, I used the payphone on Barton Road. Barton Road? Where there's all shops and pubs and CCTV? Oh, I don't... Have you never watched 24 Hours in Police Custody? They record calls so that they can use them in court. What are we going to do? Hey, Sarah so says owe you an apology. I'm sorry you lost your job. <laughs> Lawyer's apology. The clause is sewn in. I can't help but feel that if somebody else accused you of keying that car... Without proof. You would have rolled with the punches. Dined out on it eventually. I can see I'm the problem here. Look, I can have a word with your boss, Gavin, is it? I can explain. It was some bitter guy who I beat in court who keyed my car. It was my mistake. But you took my accusation to heart. Oh, got all weak and emotional. You know, the way birds do. My bad for jumping to the wrong conclusions. Sarah says you're really good at your job. I'm sure I can explain all that to Gavin. Man to man. I didn't like my job. I didn't like Gavin. All the same, you, you need to work for your little lad. We'll be fine. All right, fair enough. Is there anything else I can do? Cheers. You've done enough. At least let me help you get a car. I know the guys at streetcars. I'm fine. I'll manage. I always do. I wonder where you got to. Oh, just fancied a spin class in as we didn't do our run. And then I grabbed a protein shake with some of the girls. A protein shake? How much that cost you? That's all you can think of, the cost. Well, it's all they think about it, isn't it? These con men, con women. 
Sit the word protein in some and boom, you've doubled your profits. What next? Protein air, protein rain. Might as well start a Manchester branch. You're quite finished. Well, they saw you coming, didn't they? Well, I'm not as much of a mug as you think I am. You weren't covering for Barry at streetcars. You're slipping. You haven't even got an excuse. Makes you feel stupid, don't I? Like Mr and Mrs Twee. Tim, you started it. Yeah, and you're the one that keeps banging on about it. Oh, that's what I'm doing, am I? You know, last year it was parking wars. This year it's protein shakes. It's just another bandwagon. Oh, well, pardon me for taking the pulse of my local community. Oh, get off your high horse, Tim. That's not why you've changed your tune. You just don't want to spend any time with me. <sighs> Going for a shower. Don't expect you'll be following me up. Hey, good news. Just ran into Lydia. We cleared the air. What state was she in? Ah, uh, she was sheepish, sobering up. I apologised. Okay, well, I'm glad. I offered to sort things out with Gavin, but she didn't seem interested, so I think we might have seen the last of her. Wait, hang on, rewind. Yeah, it turns out she couldn't stand him or the job. Oh, well, there you go. You've done her a favour then. In a roundabout way, yeah. No, Adam, I'm being sarcastic. I'm just telling you what she said. I offered to explain the misunderstanding and help in any way I could. I even offered to put her in a cab. You know what? I think my race is run. Thanks for the drinks, guys. I know you like her. She can be the life and soul, but she's one of those people drama follows her around. Do you know when she woke up this morning, she had a decent job and she hadn't been holding by the police? Hold. Look, right, I know she's told you that she's fine, but she's clearly not fine. So why are you taking her at face value? Why would you side with her, a woman that you barely know? We're married, we're trying for a baby. We don't need this aggravation. Because I don't, it's your attitude. It's the way that you, you just switch off the second that something doesn't suit you. It just, it makes me question. Question what? That ring says it's me and you against the wall. Well, it's me and you arguing again. Because of her? No, because of you, Adam. Because you think you are the centre of the universe. Do you know that having a baby is hard enough without being stuck with a partner who thinks it's all about him all the time? Stuck with? Wow. Sounds to me like you're the one having commitment issues. Well, either way, it's probably not really the right time to be trying for a baby. Just like that, you click your fingers and it's all decided. It's my body, so yeah, it's decided. If worst comes to worst, it already has. Well, I'll tell the truth. You weren't speeding, you were driving really safely. Like Ted stepped into the road. Lewis Hamilton would have hit him. And the other truth? You were hung over from the night before, probably over the limit. You said as much to him, Ran. Do you think he's gonna cover that when he hears about Ted? You told me to lie. I wanted to come clean from the start. You were all, I'm not going back to prison. Too right. I'm never going back there. Look, I'm sorry, but you need to get this into your head. If the police catch you on the CCTV from that phone box, you're on your own. Coming up here on ITV, we meet Anne Williams 10 years on from Hillsborough as her fight for justice for her son continues. That's our brand new drama starring Maxine Peake, Anne, next.